My dearly beloved in Christ, the greatest influence we can have on anyone is that in which we affect them spiritually and morally. The time during which this influence is perhaps the greatest is during childhood, and it's specifically the parents of the child who have at that time the greatest sway. The training of the spiritual and mortal formation of children must be taken with great thought and much prayer. The difficulty of the task is compounded by the fact that in the past, although the spiritual and moral training and formation of a child was primarily in the hands of the parents, they were aided by the best efforts of the school and society. Both children and parents learn by a combination of three ways, by hearing, by seeing, and by doing. But it's primarily by seeing and doing that children retain the most. We're bombarded with so much noise nowadays that hearing is the least effective, for we automatically tune out that which we do not want to hear. It's mostly through the eyes that things are absorbed. As effective parents, you cannot expect your children to live the Catholic religion if they do not see you actually living it. And they must see you living it all the time, not just when it's convenient. If the salvation of your soul is not the number one priority in your life, then it won't be for your children, especially when they get older. My dearly beloved in Christ, if you rarely pray in the home, if your children hardly ever see you, say you, see you saying your morning and night prayers, grace at meals, or the rosary, how can you expect them to learn, much less value, such prayers? Sadly, when the time for the First Holy Communion comes around, your children may temporarily and partially learn the basic prayers in class, but they will soon forget it all if they are not recited frequently in the home. Further, it's sad to see that on occasion, some parents who have not really been practicing Catholics will be anxious to see that their children make their first Holy Communion and Confirmation. Yet, once this is accomplished, they fall back into their lax attitude with regard to religion, dragging their children into the pattern of infrequent attendance at Mass and the sacraments. My dearly beloved in Christ, if you receive the sacraments infrequently, you're showing them that the sacraments are really not that important, but are there when you feel like receiving them. You're there by making your religion one of convenience, which must fit into your agenda, rather than making yourself fit into God's agenda. Your children will reflect this as they get older. My dearly beloved in Christ, people generally keep what's precious to them and display what gives them delight? Would your children see you keeping, displaying, and cherishing in your home? Pictures of the family are usually there, but what about your heavenly family, the crucifix and religious pictures? Remember, children learn mostly by what is practice, what they see practice. If you want God to be important to your child, you must make him important to yourselves. Those of you who no longer are raising children or do not have any children cannot sit back and relax. You also have an obligation to give the best example possible for little ones that are watching you to see if you're reinforcing the important lessons they're learning from their parents or if you're contradicting it by your actions. My dearly beloved in Christ, the teaching of religion and good example should begin in infancy. This is perhaps where some parents make a serious mistake. They falsely conclude that an infant or even a young toddler does not really know what's going on, and that they should be allowed to do their normal baby behavior both at home and at mass with little, if any, teaching of God or religion. My dearly beloved in Christ, if this is your train of thought, you're seriously mistaken. Little ones, even from infancy, are masters of self and manipulation. They understand far more than they're given credit for. They easily become acquainted with schedules, rewards, and consequences in their little world. 
and in no time should God be left out. They can be taught to sense family prayer time, silence in church, and the idea that God is their loving Heavenly Father, similar to their earthly daddy. Sometimes parents are of the opinion that religious teaching can wait until their first Holy Communion, and then the teacher can take care of it. My dearly beloved in Christ, parents are the foremost teachers, and they'll they will remember, your children will remember and live what you show rather than what they hear for the first time in a few classes taught by a teacher. She's there to reinforce and expand, not to introduce things for the first time. My dearly beloved in Christ, these basic principles for the spiritual formation of children also hold true for their moral formation. Both are integrally related. Once more, moral character, as with spiritual character, is formed more by example than by rules. It must begin in infancy, and it's a duty and privilege of parents to foster it in their children. My dearly beloved in Christ, there are powerful and disturbing influences outside the home, which can even intrude into your home if you allow them through television Music, video games, reading material, clothing styles, things on the internet, etc. My dearly beloved in Christ, your children are exposed on all sides to ideas, persons, and brainwashing that are intent on tearing down all that you're trying to build. Pope Pius XI in his encyclical on the Christian education of youth warned parents against the spiritual cancer of naturalism. This philosophy, philosophy separates human belief and human conduct from all reference to God, His ways, and His commandments. This is especially deadly in the matter of modesty and purity. My dearly beloved in Christ, the area of moral goodness is extremely difficult to teach your children because it isn't enough to just warn or Guard them against evil. For that would make God's loving guidance seem to consist in a list of don'ts and prohibitions. My dearly beloved in Christ, rather you must concentrate on developing a positive, attractive approach to moral goodness, making it valuable and desirable, a treasure that your children will want to possess and keep safe. In this area, you as parents are most important in giving good examples of modesty and purity by the way you dress, by the way you conduct yourselves, by your language, by the type of entertainment you frequent, and by the material you read. My dearly beloved in Christ, such training not only involves teaching your children to act prudently, and to base their choices on God's values instead of those of the world or what they want at the time, but also is, involves the establishment of sound rules that must be enforced. Your children must learn to be truthful in an untruthful world and responsible in a no-fault world. Once again, if they've been taught to make God most important in their lives, they'll have a solid foundation on which to base the importance of this, even when society is telling them otherwise. You must show them by example how to be patient and persevering. How you handle disappointments, contradictions, and common ills will be the first lesson in helping them to persevere and accept such things as part of God's will. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.